Welcome to Fall in Stardew Valley, a beautiful season with a ton of potential before the winter rolls in and stops your farming completely. Obviously, you've watched the last two guides for spring and summer, so you know where we're starting from. But if you need a reminder, the important things are you've gotten everything that's exclusive to spring and summer for the bundles. You have a big barn and a big coop. You've upgraded most of your tools to steel as needed, and you've bought everything you need from all of the previous holidays. That's really about it. With all that out of the way, let's go into fall. For farming, obviously what's most important is the most money. You'll want cranberries assuming you don't have mass quantities of quality speed grow. Otherwise, do pumpkins. Pumpkins take a really long time to grow, so the speed grow really goes a long way. But also note, if you use pumpkins, you only get two large harvests throughout the season, whereas if you use cranberries, they regrow every few days, so you'll be getting a nice steady stream of money. For the bundles, you're going to need an eggplant, pumpkin, yam, and corn, which you should already have, for the fall crops bundle. You'll also want five gold quality corn if you haven't completed the quality crops bundle yet. I'd prefer you don't use the pumpkins for the quality crop bundle, because they're worth so much, but if you have to, you have to. And then, for the dye bundle, you'll want a sunflower if you didn't get it already in summer. You should have bought at least one rare seed from the traveling merchant before now. Now is the time to plant it. Absolutely give them the best fertilizer you have, because a gold sweet gem berry sells for 4,500 gold, a 3,500 gold profit. You'll need to sacrifice one to the statue in the secret woods for a star drop, though. I usually buy two or three throughout the first two seasons. You might also have an ancient seed. Slap a speed grow on it on day one of fall, and it'll just barely grow before the end of the season. This is technically the best crop for money other than sweep gem berries, but it takes a while to get enough of them, since the only way to get more seeds is to be extremely lucky with random drops, or toss the crop in the seed maker. The last crop you might want is the fairy rose. This causes nearby beehives to produce the most expensive honey possible at 680 gold apiece. Plant a lot this season. You should be able to make enough quality sprinklers to automate a pretty large harvest, and since you can't farm conventionally in winter, make the most of it. Also fun fact, throw your cranberries in the seed maker to sell the seeds for more money than the cranberry is worth, with a bonus chance for ancient seeds to come out as well. You should also have two trees blooming in the fall, or one if you have the fruit bat cave. The apple tree is nearly required since you need three for the fodder bundle, plus one optional for the artisan bundle. You also need a pomegranate for the enchanters bundle. Hopefully you planted these in spring or early summer. For your animals, I recommended in the summer guide that you have both a big barn and a big coop by the end of the season. And that's because by fall 10th, you'll want a deluxe barn and a deluxe coop by the end of the season. Once you have your deluxe barn, you'll want to buy a pig as soon as possible, since it'll take another 10 days to mature. It'll then produce truffles whenever it's outside, required for the chef's bundle. Make sure you get this before winter. They can't leave the barn, thus can't make truffles in winter. This is one of the killers of year one bundle completion runs. With the big coop, you'll want to buy a duck, both for the duck egg to complete the animal bundle, assuming you already have a chicken and cow products, and for the duck feather for the dye bundle. I recommend using the duck egg over goat cheese or wool because the duck is needed anyway for the feather. With the deluxe coop, you'll want the rabbit which produces the rabbit's foot. Perfect for not getting caught cheating, and for the enchanter's bundle. This one's less priority than the truffles since you can still get it in winter. With this season's crops, you should be able to finish all of the pantry bundles, which unlocks arguably the most important bundle reward, the greenhouse. You can plant any crop for any season in there, with fertilizer that never goes bad since the season never changes. I recommend planting rare seeds first, ancient fruits second, and star fruit third. You can also plant the red cabbage seed when you find it. Lastly, keep checking the traveling cart for red cabbage seeds every Friday and Sunday. You'll need one soon. I'll be going over the other way to collect one this season if they're not appearing for you. As usual, you'll need to complete the fall foraging bundle by grabbing the various fall foraged items, including wild plums, hazelnuts, blackberries, and common mushrooms. Also, as usual, craft these into fall seeds to sell them for more than they would sell it for individually. I recommend getting to foraging level 8 by fall 8th, since this is blackberry season, and you'll be able to get 3 berries per bush at level 8. If you're wild, you can even get to level 9 and then eat that survival burger you got all the way back in spring to reach level 12 temporarily, and you'll get 4 berries per bush. These work as an easy 10k gold or so if you pick them diligently, they can also be a nearly endless source of energy or work as liked gifts to quite a few villagers. If you finished your vault bundles, which you should this season, 
You can also forage coconuts and cactus fruit in the desert. Both can go towards the exotic foraging bundle. Okay, for reference, your lake fish, ocean fish, and crab pot bundles should be finished already. If they're not finished, all of the fish from them except for sturgeon and tuna are still catchable in fall. Also, the puffer fish needs to be caught in summer. In fall, the new fish you can catch for bundles are, for the river fish bundle, tiger trout in rivers, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., and in the night fishing bundle, walleyes in rivers and lakes, 12 p.m. to 2 a.m. when it's raining. As always, the ghost fish is on floors 20 and 60 of the mines whenever, wood skips are in the secret woods pond whenever, and now that you should have access to the desert soon, the sand fish is found in the desert pond, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. For any other fish you may have missed in previous seasons, please refer to the spring and summer guides. You should be able to finish off the fishing bundles in fall as well, since any fish that are available only in winter aren't used in bundles. This removes the glittering boulder, giving access to panning in the town, lake, and river. You get guaranteed ore every time, plus a chance for gems or omnigeodes, and most importantly, the lucky ring. Finally, the legendary fish of the season is caught at the very top of the river in town and requires only level 3 to catch. Uh, I would still recommend something higher, but go for it if you want. So as I said in the summer guide, I recommend that you have the mines finished. This is because at the bottom you'll find the skull key, which allows you to access the skeleton cavern once you've completed the vault bundles. Hey, have I mentioned that completing the vault bundles is important yet? Because it is. Seeing how you have completed the mines, you should have enough gold to upgrade your axe to gold before heading to the skull cavern. This is the only tool I really recommend upgrading this far for now, but you can still do the others if you have money burning a hole in your pocket. Everything else is fine on steel. So the Skull Caverns are a completely different beast compared to the mines. Before any expedition, you'll want to be extremely prepared, with plenty of food items, preferably some speed boosts, tons of bombs, and stone for staircases. I could make an entire video guide to the Skull Cavern alone, but basically just know that the deeper you go, the more iridium you'll find, which is the fourth ore after gold you'll start finding Iridium nodes around floor 25, which is a challenge to get to on its own since your progress doesn't save between trips. You don't really need Iridium for anything, but its best uses are for tool upgrades and Iridium sprinklers. You also need tons of it if you're going for the perfection ending, so don't slack. And if you don't have that red cabbage seed yet, both the serpents and the mummies have a 0.2% chance to drop it. Yeah, it's not high, but it's something. Also, your blacksmith bundles should be long since done before fall. Check the summer guide if you need it, though. Fall has a lot to it, so here's everything that doesn't neatly fit into the other sections. We have a fairly juicy holiday with the Stardew Valley Fair on the 16th. First, we have a Grange display contest where you put 9 items on display to get judged. You'll be looking to put items in from all different categories that have the highest sell price and quality possible. For example, you'd want things like a gold pumpkin, a diamond, and any legendary fish, wines, things like that. If it sells for over 400 gold, you're getting the max points from that. If it's iridium quality, you're also getting max points from that. Otherwise, you get a few points for every category you fill in, fruits, vegetables, minerals, things like that. Getting the best outcome here isn't that hard. You'll get rewarded with star tokens, a currency unique to this event. 1,000 for first, 500 for second, 250 for third, and 100 for last. Or you could take the easy way out and just put in Mary Lewis's shorts for a free 750 points. There's a bunch of different minigames littered about, but the one we want to focus on is the spin to win wheel, which is notable because it's rigged to land on green 75% of the time. Easy points. If you're bad at statistics, just keep betting half of what you currently have to eventually work up however many points you want. If you want to buy everything from the shop, you'll need a max of 4,900 points, depending on what the last random store item is. If you only want what's needed for completion, just buy the Stardrop and the Rare Crow for 2,800 points. There's nothing too crazy about the other holiday, Spirit's Eve, other than the prize at the end of the maze that works as a universally loved item or sells for 2,500 gold. There's also a Rare Crow and Jack-O-Lantern recipe for sale for a combined 7,000 gold. One thing that's unlocked in fall that's new to version 1.5 are the special orders. At the beginning of every week, two orders will be added to the board. You choose one and have anywhere from a week to a month to complete the task. Just know that you'll probably need a majority of the time provided most of the time. Each order has a unique item obtained upon completion. Could be a recipe, an additional item in the shop, or straight up a gift. Some of the best items in the game are obtained through doing this, and try to not do repeat missions if you can. 
One other thing you might complete in fall is putting 60 items in the museum. This will get you the key to the sewers, which was hinted towards at the beginning of spring. For now, you can head into the sewers and meet a new character that is romanceable and also has a bunch of really cool items for sale, most of which you won't be able to afford. After everything is said and done, the only things you should have left bundle-wise at the end of the season is the winter foraging bundle and a few of the bulletin board bundles, though I will say that everything there is possible before winter except the nautilus shell in the field research bundle, it's tough to get that much done. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything important, but if I did, please mention it in the comments. With all of this, you should be ready to take on winter, and maybe even some 1.5 content. As always, these guides are being made alongside my Let's Play, where you can get a full in-depth view on every decision I make, and judge me for them. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.